Hi everyone, Danny here. I'm a photography and related media student at FIT. I'm a first year, this is my first semester, fall 2023, in the Associate in Applied Science program. I'm gonna be reviewing my first week, and I think this is gonna be a series where as the semester and as the year progresses, I'll be releasing videos, hopefully for all you prospective students out there who are considering going to FIT, in particular to study photography, or perhaps you wanna study photography at a different school, just to kind of give you an understanding, more perspective from a current student about what it is that I'm learning and what you can possibly expect in this program um, at FIT and maybe other programs at other schools. So I'm in five classes this semester. These are pretty much required classes. So I'm in Introduction to Lights, Photography 1, Introduction to Photography, Creative Approaches in Photography, and then Fundamentals of Design for Photography, and History of European Art and Civilization from the Renaissance to Modern Day. Talking about the first week at FIT as a photography student, it's pretty much just going to be syllabus and getting the vibe of the class and the professor. That's pretty much what it was for all of the classes. But other than that, um, I'll start off with Introduction to Light. So Introduction to Light, really, we pretty much just went over the syllabus, expectations for classroom, and we were given our first assignment. Our first assignment was a light-driven self-portrait. The professor sent us links to look at, to look at examples, and we also have to collect swipes, which are pictures we find online that are light-driven and put them in a folder to pretty much give us inspiration, not only for this class, but in the future. The professor wants us to get inspiration from other photographers and get inspiration from different photographs to inspire our own work. The light-driven self-portrait, originally my idea was to be a silhouette, so my head would be black. It would be the side of my head. It would be pretty much pitch black against the white background. And the way I was going to achieve this was through an on-camera flash in my hand. So my camera being on one side and the flash being on the other. I tried having the flash facing away from me and towards me. None of them were really what I wanted. Um, they weren't favorable. This was the best shot. And this is with post-processing. So we really bringing down the blacks, the shadows, and bringing up the whites and the highlights, and also some cropping. It wasn't really what I was going for, but I started to improvise and think differently. So I have this, you can see this right here. This is a uh, kind of like a disco light that I got for a party one day. So I put it on this red setting and my camera was on a tripod on top of my dresser. I set it for a 10 second exposure. I faced east for about two and a half seconds and then north facing towards the camera for about five seconds and then west for about two and a half seconds and this is the photograph that i produced this is the raw photo so you can see i'm mostly looking directly at the camera because for five seconds out of the ten i was looking directly at the camera and throughout this process i was also mildly shaking my head to give it more of this kind of dystopian uncomfortable look and then I brought it into Lightroom, did some post-processing, and this is the final product. I like this a lot because it's, you know, really brutal. I wanted to make it the viewer feel uncomfortable or to sympathize with the subject. And I just like how it looks like I'm on fire. It looks uncomfortable, it looks brutal. I changed, I did some color grading. I brought up the highlights to really give it this kind of dramatic effect and added some contrast. So that was my first assignment for the first week for Introduction to Light. I actually really enjoyed it. I love the photograph that I produced. Also, Introduction to Light is four hours long, at least for me, so nine to one o'clock. Moving on to Photography 1, Introduction to Photography. Again, syllabus week. Photography 1, I believe, is three hours for one part, and then we get an hour break, and then we have two hours of lab, you know, computer lab. So the first three hours in the classroom, in the studio classroom, it was reviewing the syllabus and then the professor took us on a tour of the floor. So we got to go see the photo cage where there's all this equipment that we can borrow. And then I think we went down to the third floor, maybe up to the fifth floor to see the printing shop where we can see where we got to meet the staff, um, understand different kind of materials we can request to print, how much it costs, quality, all that good stuff. And then we walked over to the library from the Pomerant Center or from building D. And we went up, I believe it's the sixth floor where there's this kind of photo studio set up. That's another resource available to us here at FIT. When we came back after break, we met at the computer lab and the professor introduced us to Lightroom Classic, which is great, I never used it before. I only used Lightroom the cloud version, which is the one you might have on your phone or you might use it on your computer. And that's where your photos are stored in the cloud. 
I've used up all of my space, so I've been meaning to figure out a different strategy for storing my photos and my edits. Luckily, I was introduced to Lightroom Classic because that's a program where you can catalog, organize um, your photos, including your edits on your computer or an external hard drive, which is great because now I'll be able to free up space on my Adobe Cloud. The assignment that we got for Photography One that was due to next week was a uh, scavenger hunt where we were given 10 words. We had to go out into the world, the external world, away from our rooms, away from our homes to photograph uh, terms that we had. So those terms were bright, contrast, line, small, brutal, confusing, dull, shadow, busy, and flat. We also had to print five of the photos. So I'm going to start off with the photos that I printed. Here's the first one, contrast. This is right by Columbia University Business School. It's this building right there um, by like this intersection, this weird intersection. This is cropped a lot and also post-processed a lot to really bring out the black stairs against the white wall. The next one is line. This is also cropped a lot, post-processed. Um, this is actually a bus. It's those buses that are made of, of two compartments and then there's that middle part. So this is what this is. And when I saw it, I thought, oh, this is gonna be my line photo. This is small. This is a this was a fly in my house that's been in here for like a long time. Um, when I got back from the barbershop, the same day that I took the other two photos, uh, this fly just landed on my door and I thought, ooh, this is an opportunity for me. So I grabbed my camera, took uh, photos, got really close to the fly, manually focused, tried not to spook the fly. And luckily I got this picture. Here's a raw photo. And, and then here's the edited one. The next one that I printed was this one, Brutal. So this was captured on a different day. I was on my way to go see a movie with a friend. We were heading towards um, a bodega to get some like snacks, candy, before we went to the movie. And I was struggling to get Brutal. I knew I wanted to get something like this. And I we were walking on the Lower East Side. I saw this scene as I was approaching it, turned on my camera really quick, didn't really have time to expose for the photograph, but I knew it was going to be underexposed a lot, but I knew I could bring it up in post-processing. So I turned my camera on really quickly, snapped the photo, kept on walking. And then we have Confusing, which is another one that I printed here. This is the same day when I was walking on the land, on the Lower East Side with my friend. Uh, it was running kind of late, so I took the liberty of walking around. I saw this building that looked kind of interesting. Here's the raw photo. And here's the edited version. Um, I chose this one as confusing because with the post-processing, it's really unclear what this is. At first glance, I believe it looks like it's a, a painting or a work of art produced by someone. Cool, and now I'll move on to the other photos, the other five photos that I didn't print. Uh, this is bright. This is the same day I was gonna go see the barber. Um, the barber wasn't available just yet, so I went and walked around, went to Columbia Business School. Um, so this is one of their buildings. At first, I was just gonna photograph the sun but I thought that was too basic, too easy. So as I was walking around, I thought, wow, like sun reflecting off this building, which I think is called specular lights, is really strong and bright. But there goes my bright photo. Then there's dull. This is my dull photo because like, why would you do graffiti right there? It's kind of like too basic. Who's gonna see that? Then there's shadow. I really don't have any, originally I was just gonna take a photo of like my own shadow, but this did just fine. I wasn't really, trying to get anything too cool for shadow. This is busy. This was, I think, the Sunday uh, of the week when the assignment was due. So I walked up to 125th Street. I was trying to find busy because 125th is pretty busy. And then I think it was at Malcolm X Boulevard and 125th. I saw this fire truck on the north side. And there was like some commotion going on. So I walked up there, got my camera, you know, tried to like compose my shot in my head to see if it was worth it. Um, the fire truck was about to leave, so I was like, okay, I got to take my shot. So I turned on my camera, composed, brought down the shutter speed by a lot to really capture the motion of the fire truck moving. And this was the photo that I got. I struggled to get flats. Eventually I came across this, which I believe is someone's home, someone's bed. This is on Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard, and there's a lot of, it's close to 125th Street. There's a lot of people who make homes there um, against like the sidewalk. Moving on to creative approaches. Creative approaches is pretty much just a lecture where all the first year photography students come together into one theater and we hear a lecture for an hour. 
again, the first week was just syllabus week. Our assignment was to watch like these two videos that were sent to us and I think three like interview articles, reading about photographers, like inspirations, um, artists' inspiration or influences, and then write a response to that. And then also include um, what influences us in our photography. The essay or the assignment has to be 350 words. It wasn't my favorite assignment, but it was nice to think to myself, like, what actually influences my work? For creative approaches in the coming weeks, we're supposed to get visiting photographers to talk about their approach and their inspiration, their process, things like that. So I'm looking forward to that. For fundamentals of design, the professor didn't show up the first week for the first day of class. But later that day, we got an email from her with the presentation um, to study. So the presentation went over negative space, simplification, bigger ground relationship, and non-objective. And also going over high activity, low activity, negative space. The next week was Labor Day, so we didn't have class. The next class, History of European Art and Civilization from Renaissance to Modern Day. It, that was a four hour class. And Fundamentals of Design, I think, is a three hour class. And History of Art, I think, is also a three hour class, if I'm not mistaken. Um, all of them are about like three, four hours long, except uh, Creative Approaches, which is that one hour. So history of art, we just went over the syllabus pretty much the entire three hours. And then we were given our homework assignment, which was to read, I believe, chapter 18, um, which was 30 pages. The book is really detailed and intense. You go over not only history, but also, of course, art, the various artists, techniques that are used, things of that nature. I got the really big book, as you can see here. We didn't have to get this one. We're only reading certain chapters from this book. This goes over all of art history. And then we didn't have class the following week because, again, it was Labor Day. I think it's a good book. I like having a book to, to read. I just know going forward, I definitely need to split up my readings so that I'm not just reading a whole chapter the night before. So that sums up my first week. If you have questions or comments, leave them in the comment section. You can also direct message me on Instagram if you're interested in that. DM me on YouTube if that's a thing. Just so... I can start creating content or like answering questions that you might have about photography or studying photography at FIT and maybe what kind of content it is that you're interested in me producing. Other than that, thank you for watching. Like this video if you thought it was helpful and subscribe if you would like. If you didn't like my video, well then, you know, whatever. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.